Buenas tardes, chicos. Bueno, eh, muchas gracias eh, por entrar el día de hoy. Así como saben, estaremos dando, bueno, estaremos empezando la actividad de Yes or No en Behavior. Y bueno, primero, antes de empezar, quería darles algunas indicaciones sobre cómo va a ser llevada el día de hoy la charla. Como vieron, va a ser una charla completamente en inglés porque nuestra ponente pues, no sabe hablar español. Eh, sin embargo, está con todas las ganas de poder explicarnos un poco más sobre qué hacer y qué no hacer en su país, que es India. Entonces, eh, espero la participación de todos. También la ponente, eh, bueno, nos hizo llegar, ¿no? De que a ella le gustaría que participen. Entonces, eh, traten de hacerlo porque ha sido este, muy, muy grato de parte de nosotras poder contar con ella. Entonces, bueno, espero que puedan participar. Si es que quieren hacerlo o le da vergüenza, qué sé yo, hablar en inglés, pueden hacerlo mediante el chat. Ya nosotros podemos también hacer la interacción con la ponente si es que a ustedes le da un poquito de vergüenza. Pero no hay problema, pueden hacerlo. También ustedes levantan su mano y hablan por el micrófono. Otra cosa también, para poder ser validada ¿no? su asistencia y enviarle su certificado, y que sea válido, tienen que haber llenado su pretest, aprobado su postest. Y también nosotros durante la charla vamos a enviar un código, así como en, en los entrenamientos, para que ustedes lo coloquen en el postest y, y bueno, sea válido, ¿no? Eh, también, bueno, como les dije, tienen que estar durante la reunión y si es posible participando de manera activa aquí. Eh, y bueno, eso sería todo. Entonces ya vamos a empezar a, a conversar en inglés y ya nuestra Leoín nos va a presentar la ponente. Muchas gracias a todos. Cualquier cosa también pueden dejarla en el chat. Oh, ok. Uh, so ya va, I'm going to introduce you in Spanish and then in English. Ok. Eh, bueno chicos, eh, bienvenidos todos, como ya mencionó Elisa, eh, hoy día tenemos como invitada a Surya Bapal. Ella es estudiante en India, en la Universidad Yajawarla Nehru Medical College, eh, que queda en la ciudad de Karnataka, bueno, en Belgaum, en Karnataka. Y ella fue pues una de las personas que estuvo conmigo cuando yo realicé mi intercambio. Eh, ella está en el segundo año del MBBAs y bueno, ella estudia ¿no? en Belgaum, Karnataka, pero... Vive en, ay, me diré, <laughs> vive en, so you, in which uh, city are you now? I'm in Kolkata. In Calcuta, in, <laughs> in Spanish. Yeah, so, ok, bueno, eh, espero como ya les dijo Elisa, de que pues, sean eh, bastante participativos, eh, si no pueden hablar porque tienen vergüenza o cualquier cosita, pueden escribir en el chat, ¿no? O si no, bueno, pueden eh, prender su micro y a preguntar, ¿no? Eh, Surya va a hacer varias preguntas. Esta sesión va a ser bien dinámica, así que espero que puedan participar. And now I am going to introduce you in English. So she is Surya Bapal. She studies in the Hawarla Nehru Medical College. And she is in the second uh, year of MBBA. And she was the person that received me when I went to, to India for my exchange and was a wonderful experience. So I hope that you um, made a lot of questions and learn a lot about this country that is very beautiful and very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, so I should um, share my screen now? Yeah? Yes, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, can can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, good afternoon for all of you. Uh, so um, I'll I'll be giving a small uh, presentation on India in general, so that you get an idea of you know how the place is, uh, what it's about. And uh, my name, uh, as Elisa mentioned, is Shurja Bhapal. Uh, that's how we pronounce it. Uh, and uh, so Shurja Bha, in English, it means as bright as the sun. 
so yeah my parents put a little too much thought in naming me uh, so yeah okay um before i start um uh, i like all of you obviously must have heard the name of india so uh, apart from elisa who has been here uh, could like somebody just you know when when i say india or when you think about the place what is the first thing or the first reference uh, that comes to your head anything um like could anybody just unmute or to say like i want to see how it progresses from there throughout the presentation uh, on the chat they are writing elephants bollywood elephants and bollywood again <laughs> okay shahrukh khan <laughs> yeah shahrukh khan uh, okay yes bollywood is a, i i have a slide on bollywood just because uh because of <laughs> elisa's love uh, okay uh yeah so from elephants and bollywood let's see you know there's more to the country and let's explore okay so this is a map and uh, so in the we have uh, 29 states and uh, eight union territories so union territories means they are directly uh, governed by the president uh others like the states they are under each have their own uh government so there are state governments and then there, again we have a prime minister who is the uh, head of the central government so uh i think in peru it is a presidential uh system where your head of uh, head of the country is your president but uh india on the other hand is a parliamentary system where the head of the country is the prime minister so uh, like the head of the um, executive functions of the government is the uh, prime minister okay so uh, india on the north so like this this entire belt this is um, there is the himalayas the mountain you know the great himalayas is on the no in the north uh, we have the bay of bengal uh, on the east the indian ocean in the south the arabian sea on the west and uh, this area which is uh, mostly in the state of rajasthan this is uh, the thar desert um, so we more or less have all the you know physical terrains within our country so all kinds of places to see is there within the country okay okay so moving on uh, before we go uh, I'll, i'll just a little bit about myself uh so um here is uh, this is uh, west bengal and uh, this is where i am originally from this is my native place i was born here and this is where i am now um so and uh, however my college that is jawaharlal nehru medical college is in the state of karnataka so i study here but i live here and because of the quarantine and the lockdown so we our college got shut and we had to fly back home so i'm at home now uh, okay uh, also just um, just a small thing you might wonder uh, you know even though this is a state on the east why it's called west bengal it's because uh, you see bangladesh here so um, bangladesh and west bengal this entire thing used to be one state called bengal and after we got freedom from you know the british in 1947 again uh, in 1951 there was a partition where bangladesh became an independent country and uh, you know so that part used to be called east side of bengal and we were left with west bengal hence the name okay Uh, so that is a photo of my school um it's mahadevi birla world academy it's in kolkata and this is my college uh, jawaharlal nehru medical college which is in belgao karnataka and in general um like if i just need to say you know my interests and all that uh, i really like reading um, you know story books and all and i do um, you know do a bit of writing sometimes uh so um yeah and i enjoy public speaking and i am also part of uh, the medical students association of india <coughs> excuse me 
So I'm also part of that. And through that, uh, we do a lot of awareness programs, you know, to reach out to uh, mostly the rural parts of the country or where there is not much uh, awareness about healthcare and sanitation. And also uh, I was part of the exchange uh, group of MSAI through which uh, that is how I met Elisa because you know I was the local exchange officer for my college and therefore, okay. So um, here are just a basic few things about the country. So um, India's population uh, is one around 1.38 billion, which is uh, you know almost 18 percent of the total world population. So we are it said like after China we are the second most populated, and um, I told you about the states, the union territories, and um, there are innumerable languages in this country because uh, there are so many people, it is only um, evident that, um, you know, there, are, there is a lot of diversity because of the huge number of people that live together and diversity in every aspect of life. And so, however, by the constitution, 22 languages are um, recognized as official languages. That is all, you know, um, government work, all uh, official work is done in these all 22 languages. And uh, you might know the names of Hindi, you might know Hindi. So that is the most used, like most used in the country. Uh, and each language again has, um, you know, multiple dialects. So it's not necessary that, you know, one language is just spoken in one way. So there are again, like each language can have over, uh, you know, over 500 dialects of just the same language. So it's, it's huge. Okay, so yeah, we were a British colony and we got independence uh, in 1947, 15th August, big celebration happened uh, all over the country. And um, also India was home to one of the oldest civilizations uh, after Mesopotamia, we, there was the Indus Valley civilization. So uh, the entire part of Rajasthan, the, where I said, you know, the desert area, the north, the north, northern part of India, that is where the Indus Valley civilization was mainly based. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, till now, do we have anybody with any doubts or questions? Anything? <coughs> okay. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of places to visit, but so obviously I couldn't put everything. So I just put a few of, you know, my favorites and uh, just a few photos. Okay, <clears throat> this is Taj Mahal. Uh, this is in Agra in Delhi. And uh, it is one of the uh, seven wonders of the world. This, um, this again has a very romantic uh, story behind it. So <clears throat> basically one of the emperors, Shah Jahan, this is actually a tomb to his um, dead wife. So wife uh, died and he, he had promised her that I will build, a, uh, build something in memory of you that the entire world uh, will be bound to remember you and will come from all over the world to just, you know, uh, speak of your beauty. So that is how the Taj Mahal came. And okay, this is, uh, so Rajasthan is um, a place where there are innumerable palaces, you know, it's, it's, um, there are palaces, forts. And so this is, <coughs> this is the very famous Amber Fort of Rajasthan. And it's huge. So um, there's the, so within the fort area, there's a different place for you know the commoners to stay. There's a different marketplace. There's a great bath. There'll be the main king's palace. There'll be a place for all the queens. So it's it's just a spectacle to behold. Okay, this is um, in the this is in Himachal Pradesh. This is you can see the Himalayas and uh, that's the Satluj River. <coughs> I'm sorry. So. Yeah, uh, so uh, that's in Himachal Pradesh. And this is in Sundarban. This is very close to my house. 
and this is not a photo click by me i have been to sundarbans never have i spotted a tiger till now so <laughs> and it's very difficult it's very difficult so it's called the royal bengal tiger and uh, they are very um, they, it's very difficult to spot one and there was a lot of uh, and a lot of um, you know schemes and things are going on you know to protect their number because because of all the hunting and everything it had gone uh, pretty low so this is in sundarban and um, yeah okay this is in benares <clears throat> this is uh, so uh, the huge river ganges uh, on the banks of ganges in the evening lots of people come and they offer their prayers okay so they light up the uh, so they light up candles and they do art so they do arti what do i call arti they worship to their gods and <clears throat> yeah so um they light up this so the entire on the entire ganges there's music so uh, music and dance is a very integral part of any festival any occasion anywhere you go in india anything happening you'll find somebody dancing or singing okay whether it's a happy event it's a sad event whatever it is so uh, <clears throat> yes yeah, so there's lot of music there's lot of rituals happening uh, here and uh, generally like uh, people come here also you know for the last rites to uh, to uh, so after in uh, hinduism in the religion when a person after the person passes away they the body is burned and uh, then so the ashes are left so the ashes are collected and it's and ganges is like the river is considered very holy so after somebody dies generally those ashes are uh, you know uh, they're given in, into the water so that you know they're going on this spiritual journey it's it's that kind of concept okay so uh, india is a house to innumerable temples this is the very famous minakshi temple this is again from the south uh, it's um, so all these layers that you see Uh, so they have like each each uh, layer is like it's an entire story so the entire epics of uh, you know all our vedas all our um, uh, ancient scriptures holy scriptures that we have all the stories have been told by carving on stone uh, so all they have carved uh, on stone you know like doll like figures and all that on the wall and uh, that's uh, it, like it's it's just uh, when you go there you you just keep staring at how people manage to make this and this is like made way before we had um, you know modern technology and uh, proper cranes or anything so uh, so it's just uh, you know very beautiful so yeah there are a lot of more places to visit i think uh, elisa what was your you didn't visit any of these i think <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah so um what do, what was your favorite place that you visited hampi you went to goa hampi yeah, yes i prefer hampi yes uh so yeah what did you see in hampi you you only tell um cows <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. You know that I love the cows. Yeah. And also uh in India they have uh different types of of monkeys and they are in the temples. So one of these types of monkeys uh, the name is langur and is like a very huge monkey. Yeah, very. Huge. I think probably looks <clears throat> like a a child yeah. because it's very huge. And um, I was I remember that I was with with bananas in my hand <laughs> with another hand I had yeah. my cell phone to take a picture of this of this, of this monkey and the monkey comes to um because I have the bananas in my hand and I think I almost died because of that. <laughs> yeah. So like because um so we have our two um like uh the iliad odyssey is the greek uh, you know the two great epics greek epics we have the ramayana and mahabharata 
so uh, rama in ramayana there is this one character so ram uh, shri ram lord ram is the main uh, character who is considered you know as a as a, a form of god so one of his most ardent followers was a uh, hanuman who is a monkey so uh, here everybody pray praise monkeys so if if you see monk so you will see a lot of monkeys in these temples and it's very dangerous to take out your phone to click a photo so don't do that if you are ever coming to india when you see a monkey do not take out your belongings just stand still <laughs> don't do anything they'll go away yeah and you might also see people bowing down to them trying to take their blessings so yeah there are extremes also okay okay um so there are a lot of festivals and um, so i've just you know picked out a few uh the first photo is uh, holi uh, it's the festival of colors so um you know people um, you throw color at each other you there's also a lot uh, so generally all the festivals also have um, you know um, a god associated with it you know some puja or some uh, worship is also associated with it so there is uh, at homes uh, the elders are generally doing all the prayers and rituals while the young younger people are all uh, out and having all the fun of their lives so in, and uh, there's a saying um, bura mat mano holi hai which means because people get really wild you know they just throw water on you they throw color on you and it's just said because it's holy do not mind okay it's allowed on this day anything is allowed so it's it's a lot of fun again lot of lot if, if you are a bollywood fan lot of uh, sequences a uh, lot of songs and dances based in holi on holi um okay this one is um diwali so uh, in so this is the festival of colors diwali is the festival of lights so people light up their entire houses they put candles this is called the diya so uh, these are like uh, made of mud they make it and generally uh, people paint it it just diwali was when was it it was 14th november i think yeah it just went first went so it's a big thing people dress up you um, there's again there's puja there's uh, worship of goddess lakshmi and all that happens and it's each festival all of these are celebrated all throughout the country and in each part of the country it has a different story so uh, but uh, generally the way it's celebrated mostly is the same but which god you associate with it or you know certain rituals is different for every country uh, for every state okay this is uh, durga puja this is very uh, it, it's a huge festival in uh, west bengal where i am from so um, this is goddess durga basically so uh it's the story is that god is durga and these are her children okay so this is lakshmi uh she is goddess of fortune this is ganesh uh who who has the elephant head okay this is ganesh this is saraswati she is god, goddess of knowledge and wisdom and this is kartik who is god god of war <clears throat> so they are all uh and this is goddess durga who has 10 hands okay so the story is uh, she comes uh, all the way down from heaven from her father's home uh, so she comes down to earth to slay all the evil so that is the concept so when she when she comes down to earth so it's a huge festival so everybody worships and it's a festival of like five days and all over the city there are you know there uh, so uh, it is it's huge like there's decorations all around there's uh, music there's dance like the the, way, the moment you step out of your house you know there's something going around all the time uh this is uh, a festival called onam uh which is celebrated in the southern part of the country so uh in india as uh, because um, we are surrounded by water on so many sides and we are uh, we also have a lot of rivers 
so there's a lot of fertile land and almost like 60% of our country um like is involved in agriculture and that is also where most of our uh, you know economy comes from and uh, so we are a agricultural country as well so that's why uh, the harvest season when you know crops have to be harvested that is a huge festival so uh, in each state which is 29 states each state has their own harvest festival okay i have just picked one of the this is just one onam which is celebrated in kerala and uh, so they wear this typical sari which is their tra traditional uh, dress which is white and you have the golden border and you put uh, you know these white flowers on your ha uh, hair and you decorate your house and you make there are certain uh, dishes that they make Uh, on this day so you know they have that they make payasam which is a sweet dish and uh, so basically you just, they just celebrate uh, you know the coming of a uh, new year and hoping that uh, the agriculture went well this year because only then their families will run so that is the entire concept okay um yeah uh, elisa you didn't see any fest did you you didn't get to see any thing like that i think yeah no i come back i think one week <clears throat> before holy before holy yeah. yeah you missed holy yes. you could have very been. sad <laughs> yes yes <laughs> so you, we have we have one question uh, okay. uh question that have elisa so dalila <clears throat> dalila yes okay uh, like yeah, it's about the the languages you you told us that there there were like 22 languages like official languages right yes yes and how how you can communicate with each other if there are is i i think that each day has air his own languages right but yeah. if you if you need to travel to another state how you can communicate with uh, the person there so uh it it is difficult it is difficult to communicate uh, but a little bit of hindi more or less everybody knows like just the basics yes no how are you uh, how much money the, is this so like the basics all over the country mostly people know okay english works in the cities okay but uh, english works in the cities but otherwise uh, it's very difficult so uh, personally speaking i went uh, from uh, the so i went from west bengal to karnataka right so from one state to another state in my in my state the main language is bengali and in in the state of karnataka the main uh, language is kannada so i still don't know how to speak kannada i just know few words and there is no chance people they understand bengali now now because i'm in a, in the college uh, people understand english and even my hindi like before i joined college my hindi was terrible <laughs> like if you ask my friends it was terrible but now because i because in our college people from all over the country have come so you know by interacting with each other it's got a little better so with my friends and everybody who are from different states and from every corner of the country i generally talk in hindi or english but when i say go to the hospital where i have to interact with a uh, local people who who are the patients okay that's when i face the most difficulty because they are the ones who talk in kannada they will very few we understand hindi and i'm still learning so so that's why i have started learning kannada so that at least by my final year internship i know enough of it so that i can communicate with my patients better otherwise now what we do is we have a few um, few of our classmates who are locals from there who are from karnataka so we talk to them they translate for us and that's how we get uh, the history so it is difficult uh, if you don't know the language and yeah so i think um, elisa obviously faced that issue and even we do so um, it's very difficult and as i said like even in karnataka so my college is in the northern part of the state 
the moment I go to the southern part of the state, and if I speak in the way the northern part is speaking, they will not understand. Even if it's the same language, they will not understand if I'm not speaking it in the right way. So there is a lot of difficulty about languages, but uh, more or less, Hindi a little bit broken. Your facial expressions has to do the most for you when you don't know anything. Yeah. So we have another yeah. question. Um, if someone wants to go to India uh, and only knows English, uh, this person needs to study Hindi or it's not necessary? So, uh, so because the person will be going to a medical college and medical education in India is in English. So we study in English. So all the students will know English and all the professors, all the doctors will know English. So that is not a problem. But when you go to interact with your patients, when you go on the road to a market uh, and meet people uh, other than the medical community, that is when you will face a little difficulty. Uh, Hindi is uh, like, if it's better that if you're coming to the country, you learn little bit of Hindi, maybe. Also, if you are coming and you get to know which state you're coming, I would rather say more than Hindi, learn the uh, language of the state. Hindi not necessarily helps you everywhere. So like if, uh, say, I if I had known that Elisa, you know, uh, was coming and she had asked me what, you know, I'm trying to learn a language, I would have told her, you know, that learn a few words of Kannada uh, rather than learning a few languages of Hindi. Because in the place that I am, like the colleges, Kannada would have helped her more than Hindi would. So, yeah. I think that I only know one word, Ratri. <laughs> Ratri. That means night. Yes, that means night. Night. Yes. We have another night. question. Uh, yes. It's from Valeria. Valeria, you could ask the question. Thank you. Um, hello. I I would like to ask you something. As you said, in your country there are twenty-two official languages, and I would like to know if there are which is the most expo spoken language in your country or how many languages do you know? Uh, Hindi is the most spoken. Hindi is the most spoken. And uh, wait a second, okay. Um, so I, I later on in the presentation, I have a slide where I show you how, you know, how much of the country speaks which language. So Hindi is the most uh, spoken. And uh, in India, because there are so many languages, you will find most people are either bilingual or trilingual. Generally, everybody knows three languages. So I personally know three languages. One is English, one is Hindi, and one is Bengali, which is my mother tongue, which is because I'm native from Bengal. And now I'm learning bits of Kannada, which is the uh, language of Karnataka, and Marathi, which is the uh, language of Maharashtra. So I am a trilingual who is trying to learn two more languages. <laughs> yes. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, do we have any more questions or should I move forward? No, I think I don't, we don't have more. Okay, so moving forward. Now I mentioned uh, there are, you know, that dance and music is an integral part of our culture and all our festivals and all moods and everything. So uh, we have eight classical dance forms uh, from uh, different parts of the country. Um, so, and each, each of these styles have, uh, are all, all are very different from each other. All have come from very different backgrounds. Like each dance, uh, so for example, uh, this is, and each have a different stance. So uh, like um, I personally, I am trained in Kathak, uh, Bharatnatyam and uh, Manipuri. So I know three classical dance forms. Uh, so uh, yeah, so it's, it's very rigorous uh, practice and uh, learning. So, but as I said, so for example, say if we take Kathak, so Kathak story is 
earlier in the day like when uh, there were kings and uh, they they so what used to happen say the king is having a party right so uh, king calls all his um, other king friends and all the princes and all the emperors they they are sitting and um, there is a, a lady who is called to entertain them okay uh, to to that so the dance so they used to dance and sing to please the emperors and to please the kings okay um so that those those women the dance that they used to do that is where kathak came from so it came from a very uh, dark part of history as well like uh, during that time these women were seen with a lot of respect and then eventually um they also you know and also went into prostitution and a lot of things so it became negative however the dance form was saved and now it's a huge um, and it's it's a very well respected classical dance form so that is the back story of kathak now for example if you take manipuri manipuri again comes from uh, you know people use in manipur manipur is a state in the north eastern part so there people used to uh, pray to the trees and pray to because it's it's a very um, so there's a lot of natural uh, beauty in manipur and it's the lot the, the hills and the mountains and all of that so there they used to pray to the uh, forest and pray to different trees and the wind so the entire process of worship <clears throat> comes through um through their dance so they used to express their prayers through dancing so it's a very sweet and you know very um it it's it's a very it, it comes from so both as you can see so both come from very striking different backgrounds one is kathak came from a background where to please uh you know people and manipur manipuri came as a form of worship so so that's why the dance moves the dance uh, the a uh, grace or say the expressions the mudras mudra is uh, you know whatever you make with your hands that's mudra so uh, all of that it's very different for both of them because they come because the purpose of the dance was very different so each of that uh, say kathakali kathakali again people wear you know elaborate masks and it's a huge the costume itself is half the work so uh, in kathakali again comes from a very different background it's more of a festivity and um, it kathakali show mainly all the dances there is a story so they are showing a story so they are in it's more like enacting a play through their dance uh, then uh, there is okay so there is uh, orissi this is orissi mohini attam uh, these uh, dances again come from um, okay this is yeah so these dances again come from uh, the culture of devdasis uh, so earlier um, in temples because india has has a lot of temples so and because a lot was unknown and obviously science and technology can, you know goes to the common people way later so uh, there are, we also have innumerable um, religions that have stemmed from the from like even uh, hinduism has different ways of life so it's just not one religion uh, it has different ways in which it is followed so so basically there are a lot of temples and what used to happen is uh, in these temples women as well as men young women and young men uh, they used to um, they used to give their life um, in service to god so they used to dance in these temples and that that was also a mode of prayer so they through their dance they used to channelize god so their spirituality came through their dance so that is again the story of orissi so basically what i'm trying to say is that each dance form comes from uh, you know different backgrounds and all eight of them are strikingly different uh and like if you see them and you know the names and you know a little bit you know which is what so um i so bharatnatyam kathak uh, kathakali satriya manipuri uh, mohini attam uh, odissi uh yeah okay mm. yeah also uh, 
you generally uh, if you if you following you know movies and all that it's very rare you get to see classical dance from in um, but uh, i don't know if you've seen ha- have you seen bajirao mastani maybe heard yes. of it you have okay yes. good <laughs> yes <laughs> so uh, in bajirao mastani there is uh, dipika padukon who oh, so when she comes uh, for the first time in the peshwa's hall she does this dance in this golden she wears this entire golden uh, outfit and she has this sort of it's not a ukulele but it's you know shape is like that yeah and she dances with it that is kathak that is kathak okay uh, also what else mm. in bajirao mastani also later on dipika and priyanka they do another dance both of them do another dance they wear this red sari and they do another dance yes that is yes so i don't know whether the rest of the people are even understanding <laughs> but they do this another dance which is again a maharashtrian folk dance so these are the classical dance forms there are again innumerable folk dances okay so yes okay now currency oh yes uh these are these are our notes these are our coins um we our currency is called rupee and uh, yeah we also call it taka in our language we call it taka uh, so um, your currency is sol right yes yes so uh, google told me that is the exchange so one <laughs> one indian rupee okay. yes so uh, that is um, how it is and yeah we uh, recently had a change of all our notes and everything like all the colors changed and the denominations it was a big thing so now we have very colorful notes so there's uh, yeah that's 10 that this is 10 this is 50 100 200 uh, and 500 and 2000 and uh, this man over here is a uh, father of our nation mahatma gandhi okay uh, have you, you guys know who he is he was a very big freedom fighter and uh, you know very big visionary who uh, you know played a very important role in making the country what it is okay this is 1 2 5 10 these are our coins which are used and uh, we have uh, the reserve bank of india which is uh, the organization which mints or prints the money so it's centrally uh, uh, regulated okay yes this is the slide i was talking about um so language see uh, so you see most part so this entire region basically this northern region speaks hindi okay so when you go south when you go below this part this is when hindi becomes difficult and uh, so here is bengali this is where i am from uh you have uriya okay so bengali uriya they are very similar in um, like they sound very similar so if you know one you can at least make make out what the other means uh gujarati rajasthani punjabi the, the state is punjab language is punjabi uh, place is rajasthan name is rajasthani state is gujarat language is gujarati we, we are not very innovative with names uh this is maharashtra name is marathi <clears throat> this is where kannada kannada is the uh, the one i was talking about so yeah this is where my college is here so this is where belgaum is so that's why uh, because it's between the states of karnataka and maharashtra that's why i'm trying to learn kannada and marathi because um, in the place that i am uh, most of our patients they speak either of these languages so if you try and you see this entire belt speaks hindi right so here very few speak hindi and that is when it's difficult so yeah then you have malayalam which is kerala this tamil in tamil nadu you have telugu this is andhra pradesh and telangana then you have urdu um uh, urdu is also here urdu you will um, 
get in other parts of the country as well generally uh, the muslim community it uh, urdu comes from it was there it's their religious language so it comes from there also this is bhojpuri bihar okay so yes um uh, it's no more spoken it's said to be a dead language but the oldest language that uh, in the world is sanskrit and uh, sanskrit has given rise to a lot of languages most of the so it's said that latin comes from sanskrit or even if it's not from sanskrit it's you know very um, during the same time so um, very similar and uh, from latin from sanskrit most of the european languages have come so um, a lot of english words uh, you can a lot of portuguese word even a few spanish words you can you know find their origin from sanskrit if you think so hindi uh, bengali uh, most of the languages most of the indian languages find their roots in sanskrit but sanskrit is a very tough language very tough language in uh, our schools uh, Love, you know we were taught for like one two classes very difficult to pass also as a subject but nobody speaks sanskrit San, um, so basically um, a little story uh, earlier in the day like um, if, so what used to happen is uh, there was this idea of uh, so the entire school system education system was that there was a teacher and there used to be say a set number say a 20 students or like you know 14 15 students and the teacher used to um, you know like give a lecture so the lecture was considered too holy or too precious or too um, intellectually um, too uh, it, you know was so um, priceless that it cannot be written down so most of our history is not written down because most of it used to be shruti so that's why poetry and um, you know music that's why music is a big thing in india because earlier people did not write down uh, you know history or did not write down uh, whatever is happening or what they are learning everything had to be remembered so it's always easier to remember when it's you know put in a rhythm or put in a pattern so that's where uh, it used to come so way later on people started thinking you know now there's too much knowledge and we need to you know keep it down for the rest of our generations and that's when people started writing but the language in which it was written language in which it was spoken is very different so sanskrit was a very difficult language which could only be spoken by very few people only the most learned people were allowed to write in it or to learn the language so it is not a language for the commoners so all all um, our history and everything is written in sanskrit but it was never really used as something that was uh, you are supposed to spoke uh, speak in okay yes a lot of information uh, okay uh i would really like uh, this to be more of a you know interaction uh, because it'll be fun <laughs> okay so yeah just a you know basic few um statements and i just tried um hindi and bengali because obviously i'm not teaching you uh 22 languages now uh okay so uh let's start with how are you how are you in hindi is so after i say in one language i would just like you know somebody to unmute and say it okay and then we go forward so in english it's how are you in hindi it's kaise ho okay kaise ho okay anybody somebody kaise ho yes perfect <laughs> yes <laughs> okay the same thing in bengali will be kamon acho kamon acho anybody try somebody acho kamon acho yes yes good good okay now somebody asks you how are you and you say i am fine right if you are fine that is but anyway i am fine so uh, if somebody asks you kaise ho 
you will say main theek hu main means me okay main theek means fine who so i am so the am comes later okay am is who and fine is theek so main theek hu could somebody main theek hu yes 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 you guys are good at this okay and in bengali if somebody asks you kemon acho you say bhalo achi bhalo means good okay bhalo achi so i am good so kemon acho bhalo achi bahalo achi bhalo achi it's like bha it's ha yes 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 okay now yes now learn this one in case you come to india and you like somebody and you say this so <laughs> look at it king to masti pyar ha ha mujhe tumse mujhe means me tumse is you okay mujhe tumse pyar hai pyar means love okay mujhe tumse pyar hai mujhe tumse pyar hai are nice yeah nice you are practice on her exchange i need to practice that on her exchange <laughs> oh yes this is the crux of every bollywood film every bollywood film this line is said yes, i okay. don't know that <laughs> and in bengali you say ami tomake bhalobashi ami is ami tomake is you bhalobashi means love আমি তোমাকে ভালোবাসি ট্রাই আমি তোমাকে ভালোবাসি यस আর ইট সো সুইট নাইস ওকে নাও ইজ মাই নেম ইজ সো আই উইল সে মাই নেম ইজ সুরজভা ইন হিন্দি আই উইল সে मेरा नाम सुरजभा है मेरा नाम सुरजभा है सो या ट्राई ओके मेरा नाम तत्याना है Yes, 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 and in and in Bengali it's Amar Nam Chulava. So Amar Nam, and then you Amar say Amar Nam Elisa. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh wait, yeah. Uh, then yes is ha, and in Bengali you say ha. So in Hindi it's ha. In Bengali it's ha. Uh, no is nahi in Hindi, and in Bengali it's na. Okay, so say, say. Nahi, uh, nah, nahi. <laughs> is this is this pre answer answer in Hindi or Bengali? Okay, is this presentation boring? Nahi, nahi. Enna. Nah. Good. I'm happy. Somebody <laughs> said the other one. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, are you enjoying whatever is happening <laughs> right now? Huh. Huh. Ha. Yes. Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, so these are just a few common phrases. Um, okay. Now a few common gestures. You must have seen. We do this. This is Namaste. So say we have gone to somebody's house, or um, we have uh, just met somebody after a long time, and so we do Namaste. Uh, we generally do it to elders. So uh, Namaste means. it means um uh, like in sanskrit it means i bow to you so it's um, we also do this when we are praying to god in temples or in front of the idol we also do this so uh, basically we are bowing to god or and if we are doing this to elders we are also saying you know um, we are, we are paying respect basically so this is namaste okay then another very common thing if you come here uh, you see that if say somebody is going to an elder person's house okay somebody who in relation is older to you we touch their feet so we say we touch their feet and we do like this so we touch their feet and then we do like this this means you know i bow to you and i'm and i'm i asking for your blessings so when the younger person does this the elder person generally just touches their head like this and gives their blessings so so whenever i'll go to anybody's house 
So I bow down and I touch their feet and they do this too. Okay. Uh, okay. Another thing uh, this Elisa mentioned to me and uh, that uh, I never realized this as much before is when people uh, come, you know, from outside the country, they have very difficulty, a uh, lot of difficulty in understanding uh, what nodding our head means because we nod our head a lot okay so we ex we move our hands a lot while talking on the road also if you go people are very expressive with their body when they are talking so you have people nodding their head making innumerable facial expressions moving there so if somebody is very angry they are just doing like this okay so they're just angry at somebody so uh, to make it clear so that it's not a confusion. When I'm doing this, this is no. Do you, do you want, are you fine right now? Do you want something? No, I don't want, go. This is no. <laughs> okay, now if I uh, say, if I want something, the, uh, like if somebody asks me and I want to say yes to it, or I really like something, I'll say yes. So I'll move it up and down. This is no, this is yes, okay? Now, a lot of people do this, <laughs> which is in between of yes and no. So that depends on the question. Whatever is the question, depending whether the person is smiling or frowning, you have to make out whether it's a yes or a no. <laughs> okay. Okay. So these are just a few common gestures. Okay. Uh, now, uh, a few controversial topics. Uh, these are topics... If you do not know the people well, if you do not know the place well, you should avoid. So that because you do not know how the person is going to take it or how they will react. And if you are coming from a different country and if the culture of the country is different, you might have very different views about it and very strong opinions about it. And the people you are talking to may not be ready to listen or accept it. So why get into trouble? Uh, so here's just a few topics. Okay, so caste. Um, <clears throat> there, so for a long time, there, um, there is the caste system. Okay, so uh, caste system in India originally back in the day was started as, so there are basically four castes. Okay, there is the Brahmins, there is the Kshatriya, there is the Va Vaishya, and there is the Shudra. Okay, Brahmins mean they are uh, the people, they are the educators, they are the learned people, they are uh, people who also worship to God. Okay, they are, uh, they are the ones who their job is to acquire knowledge. So the caste system was started on the basis of people's profession to categorize people on the basis of the profession. So all teachers, all doctors, uh, they are all uh, they used to be considered as Brahmins. Okay. Um, then came um, the Kshatriya. Kshatriya is the warriors. So all the kings, all the soldiers, all the people who used to fight for their country, all of this is Kshatriya. And then came Vaishya. Vaishya is all the business classmen, anybody who was into trade, all the people who used to trade goods in the market, Okay, everybody is of Vaishya and Shudra. Shudra were all the laborers, all the people who used to do, uh, say, construction work, people who, um, who are maids, who used to do household work. or uh, So all, all these, all the manual labor, basically all manual labor is mostly uh, my uh, Shudra. So now what happened? This categorization was basically started on profession. Right. So if I choose to become a doctor, I'm a Brahmin. If I choose to join the army, like uh, the king's uh, soldiers and their army, I'm a Kshatriya. If I want to get into business, I'm a Vaishya. And if I decide to do manual labor and I become, say, a worker, I'm a Shudra. Now, what happened over the time? Certain parts of this caste system, they, are like, they got a lot of money and a lot of fame. So say the Brahmins, they have all the knowledge, right? They, they are the learned people. They are, way, they are respected. They are the people who kings go to ask for, uh, you know, um, 
ask for uh, information or ask for knowledge and spirituality uh, so all of that is uh, my brahmins and then there was the kshatriyas so all kings all emperors they were kshatriya so obviously all most of the money and most of the control is in their hands so over time so to keep that uh, power in their hand they made it by birth so what happened now is a brahmin son is a brahmin cannot become some other uh, ye so a shudras uh, a shudra's son is also a shudra so somebody say if a shudra, if a shudra's uh, son wants to become a manual labor uh, is is very is very intelligent and wants to become a doctor they cannot because by birth they are shudra they have to keep on doing manual labor and work uh, for menial jobs okay so what happened is it became by birth and therefore lot of discrimination happened so a huge amount of power and a huge amount of money got accumulated on certain tiers of the caste system so the brahmins and the kshatriya so basically the vaishyas were also because they were traders they were seen in a very wrong eye because like everything they do is for money however so that when the shudras because they were doing all the menial jobs they were seen you know in very wrong light and a lot of discrimination happened on that so there's a huge history of caste system which went very negatively in our culture and in certain parts of the country it still exists which is very sad but it still exists where uh, certain jobs are not given to certain caste certain people cannot apply for certain jobs we do have reservations in all government jobs so like one third say for i'll talk about mine say um, in medical school right so for applying for medical school we have to give an all india examination so in that examination also there is a reservation that one third of the seats has to go to uh, people from lower caste because they have been discriminated and they do not have the equal opportunities like others do like general people do so there's a res- there are reservations but still a lot of uh, you know discrimination happens some people are you know some people from the older generation are very rigid on it especially nowadays it's obviously caste system is not as relevant as it was but the place where it's most relevant still is marriage marrying into a different caste okay within the same religion also there are so many castes right so marrying inter caste is a big thing families don't allow there is a lot of drama so most of your bollywood films again is are on this topic okay so very rich boy falls in love with very poor girl or the reverse okay different castes they flee from home a lot of drama happens in the movies anyway so it also comes from some truth so caste is a topic um which is very touchy especially in certain parts of the country and if you don't know enough and you don't know the people also people don't tell you which caste they belong from right i will not tell you which caste or uh, people will not tell you which caste they come from so you never know while talking whom you offend and how you offend them so it's better you stay away from it until you know enough to talk about it okay another topic sadly is menstruation okay the entire concept of period bleeding of women bleeding uh, you know five days or oh, in that duration per month so especially in the rural parts of the country where sanitation is not one of the forget about um, it's it's not even one of the priorities also in certain parts so menstruation is um, considered very impure like for for those five days women are considered impure okay you are not supposed to go near them and you know the entire topic is very hush hush and uh, like if if like if they are stepping out of the home they cannot sit for any puja okay so any worship any prayer anything holy or spiritual or any festival if any festival is happening in the house during that time the if a 
women if a girl is menstruating they're not supposed to be near it also because they are impure for those five days so these are very um, it's not there all everywhere it's obviously not in the cities but still in a lot of households these are very old have you know uh, mentalities and taboos which is which is which still reside so when you talk about menstruation um like a lot of menstrual menstrual awareness is still to be uh, still to happen in our country okay uh, then is sex you don't talk about this just don't <laughs> in front of people you cannot okay so forget about people even in families it is not a discussion you have um with your parents or um like it's it's very rare that you have a conversation on this topic uh and uh, so yeah and uh, for, like even dating as a concept is not uh you know very uh, open people um like talking about uh, your feelings or if you like somebody you don't like somebody um is it's not something we do out in the open so i think elisa also faced this when she came so so obviously it's college okay there are certain people who like certain people in college and say somebody is in a relationship and it's a very hush hush thing the entire world does not know and they don't like, and they and if you talk about it they will get you know because everybody like tries to keep it a secret as much as they can so um, yeah so that's that's there then there is public display of affection so holding hands hugging in public kissing in public these are not seen you won't see you won't walk around and see people doing this or even if they are people see it in a very wrong light it's not encouraged so public display of affection is uh, like it's it's not something uh people do here or something that is encouraged and it's just seen in the wrong light in uh our society okay i th- i think um from the talk that we had um i had with dalila as well as uh elisa the other day um you guys said that you know in peru you you all are very close and you know you know it's it's, it's so i think this is this this is also a very culturally different thing uh you know because uh, in india in most of the family systems elders and uh, you know the younger people they stay on separate levels so you can't share everything so display of affection even uh, so between people is not something that is generally done okay food ha uh, okay <laughs> sorry so, There yes. is a question uh, in the chat. Maybe okay. it's about uh, the, the um, about menstruation. I think uh, she said. Valeria said that uh, in your country there are no ad- advertisement of sanitary tower or stuff like this. Nothing about that. It's like a, uh, or you can see in the street. Maybe I don't know a panel with a. a you do. You there are, but um, not much. not much no you don't there are ads now about you know sanitary napkins tampons you know ads about menstrual health but uh, like i said those are only you will find them only in the cities you will only find them uh, in the uh, you know places where people are already aware and people are already educated but it's not there where it's actually needed so yeah ads are like you know having huge posters on sanitary napkins is not a thing even forget about that like say um if i go to a store to get a sanitary napkin i'm talking about me living in a city if i go to a pharmacy and say give me sanitary napkins they will take it out and wrap it in a black plastic or a brown cover so that nobody sees it okay as if nobody knows that that i bleed that i can bleed so everybody knows women has has this but somehow it's something you just don't talk about so like i remember for, like when i was in school say um, you know in 8th or 9th class and i went um, so in class so i was in a all girls school okay so all my classmates are girls okay so i remember i um, i was absent one day 
and my teacher uh, so i had a test or something and i missed that and next day i came to class and uh, my teacher said stand up and then she said why were you absent and i said uh, ma'am i had my periods so you know i i really had bad cramps and i couldn't come and i said that in a class full of girls okay and everybody was shocked how i said that out loud okay now i thankfully uh because my mother even my father both have been very open uh to me about you, uh, you know in telling me when i had my first period what it is how it happens and that it's a very natural thing to happen and uh so at home it's a very normal to- i have a brother i have a younger brother also so it's it's not something which is hush hush at home so i did not realize it was such a big deal so at school when i said uh, you know i i had i'm having my periods everybody looked at me like you know i i just i just stirred a revolution or something happened okay so i remember when i went to the store so when i say i go to a store and i say and say there are other customers as well and say there are men also in the store and i say i need a sanitary napkin i need uh, a one packet and this you know the shopkeeper first the shopkeeper will be stunned because i'm not saying it in a hush tone and because the men standing right next to me heard it okay so it's it's very so this is my experience living in a city also so you so in certain parts of the country where there is no awareness at all it's even worse so here because i know i know and i am uh, educated myself about it i know it's not a wrong thing or it's you know it's not a curse or it's not something impure but in most p- places where you're surrounded by people and you grow up in a community where you're told from childhood that it's something that you have to hide people hide it and that's why india is also one of the leading um, causes of uh, you know women dying of complications Uh, because of infection they have there so um, maximum number of pregnant deaths of women we are the major contributor because nobody owns up to it nobody tells because it's up, because bleeding is considered as you know something which is should be in a room so yeah that's what thank you <laughs> thank you okay are there any more questions till now or we i'll just go ahead i think that there is a movie that talks about that batman i guess yes there there is a movie that batman oh, right batman yeah yeah there's a movie there's a movie so uh, batman is it's basically a man he came up you know from from rural areas and he found this you know sanitary napkin which was made from natural ingredients which is also very cheap so that you know people can buy it and um, so firstly a man talking about menstruation itself is a big considered a big thing okay so that's why it became a very big hit yeah i am so glad you guys are giving hindi film references okay uh, <laughs> moving on to food mm-hmm. okay this is <laughs> biryani uh okay so this is chicken biryani it can also be veg where you um you know you don't give the chicken and you give uh, vegetables and you give uh paneer so um this is how do i explain biryani okay <laughs> okay uh, so uh, this is just uh, really nice flavored rice with innumerable spices okay you give a lot of spices in this and yeah this is um uh, a uh, fish okay this is fish curry basically and this specific um, fish is called ilish or hilsa it's the hilsa fish a uh, scientific name is hilsa but uh, in bengali we call it ilish so this is ilish macher chhol and it's a, it's a delicacy it's just the one of the best anyway so uh, in bengal uh, because we have the sea right next to us and we have lot of rivers in our state only so the you know we we eat a lot of fish so like at my house almost 
apart from say two days a week apart from three two to three days so like at least four to five days of the week i'm eating fish every day um as a part of my uh, you know lunch or dinner or whatever so yeah and there are different ways to cook and we um india also has different parts of the country they have different spices so each part of the country you go the tastes are very different so if you go to the northern part forget about northern and southern if you go to each state each part of each state just your taste buds will keep on you know every every part has their own different food okay this is kebab okay uh kebab again a lot of different types are there you can make it with chicken you can make it with paneer paneer is uh cottage cheese so you can make it with paneer you can cap of capsicum of um so um yeah beef whatever um it's okay another thing um in india um hindus they pray like they consider the cow holy okay so hindus don't eat cow meat so we don't eat beef and uh, however um, other like christians and muslims and other religions they do but uh, hindus do con- you know they worship the cow so they don't uh, okay now uh, these are sweets wait don't go yes uh, these are sweets uh, the brown one is gulab jamun and uh, the white one is called roshogolla uh, and uh, this is uh, called uh, pedha i am i should be using my cursor me also okay this is pedha and this is jalebi okay this is jalebi i cannot explain you how it tastes these are all just sweets and each of them taste you know very different yeah and uh, elisa i think you had this you had gulab jamun yes it's like yes. bread with mm, honey i am not sure but i taste like that yeah it's better than bread with honey okay anyway <laughs> yeah but it's, okay. it's very delicious yes okay um you can take a screenshot of this if you want this is just names of like if in each state you go these are the uh, you know dishes you should try okay i will not bother reading all of it i don't know all of them also i have not been to all states of my own country also so uh, yeah like it's anyway it's just a lot just take a screenshot if you want okay moving forward clothes now uh clothes uh, again different parts of the country because of difference in the temperature because of difference in the terrain because of difference in the history um difference in culture everything there are different uh, in the clothes that they wear okay so what i'm showing now is your traditional clothes okay people nowadays in this century in this day you will not see them wearing this everywhere they go on the streets they they will be wearing t-shirts and shorts and roaming around but the, the, these are traditional clothes which people wear um in all mainly you will see them in all um uh festivals in all special occasions in marriages okay every marriage every state ka marriage has their own type of clothes has their own type of rituals and everything okay so this is punjab okay so what this person is wearing is called a salwar kameez is called a salwar kameez okay so these these are more like harem pants okay and this is um salwar it's just a salwar okay anyway so this is salwar kameez and then this is a dupatta that they take with it and uh, this is um, it's it's a way they it's not it's called kurta pajama so what the man is wearing is called the kurta this is the pajama which is worn in a certain way and this is the pagri okay pagri so in punjab what they do men don't cut their hair even women 
so men and women they are not allowed in so again not everybody in certain parts okay certain a part of them they don't cut their hair at all since they are born so you can imagine the length of hair that they have so women generally braid it and men tie it up so they have like long hair so they all tie it up and they put it up in a bun and they call and they wear it as pagri okay so this is one type of pagri there are again different ways of wearing the pagri okay um i know it's difficult but can the pose that they are giving is of again a very typical dance form of punjab so it's this is the dance you will see so if you go to any random place in india okay you go even to a disco if you go to a party also and you play a nice hindi song or a nice groovy dance music people will start with this pose okay and it's also a very uh, typical dance form of punjab does anybody know the name it's fine if you don't but i just okay nobody knows okay it's called bhangra it's called bhangra um the dance form is called bhangra so you basically just put your hands like this one finger up and you just do this with your shoulders <laughs> yes this is bhangra this is basic bhangra okay okay <clears throat> this is traditional clothes of bengal okay this is the sari okay but it's worn a little differently okay you i so you'll see other sarees also so every so sari is um worn in uh, different ways in different parts of the country okay so what she's wearing is a sari and there's there's a certain way of wearing it and this is very typical to bengal where you have the white sari with a red border okay and uh, the guy is wearing a, a punjabi okay uh, or a kurta okay and this is uh, the dhoti okay so dhoti is basically a long cloth they want to wrap both their legs and then put it between their legs i have no idea how to explain it but uh, it's dhoti okay <laughs> okay this is assam okay punjab is um, if you remember the map okay punjab is in the north so if this is the north it's on this side it's hmm, consider it north only say a little towards northwest okay bengal is on the east you remember where bengal was and this is assam okay assam is again northeast ekdam northeast so you have india has this hand on the east on top that's the northeast so this is from assam and uh, this is again a sari okay but uh, it's called so each sari has their own name okay this is called the mekhla sari so uh, yeah and the guy also wears the dhoti very differently and they tie this on their head also and this typical step that they're doing okay so this step uh, this was uh, bhangra right and this step is you put put on your uh, head and you do this okay this is bihu it's called bihu it's from assam so basically you do this and then you put your hands on your waist and you do this so this is a step you do this and then you do this okay this is bihu then uh, is uh, yeah this is from kerala where you have the uh, i if you rem- uh, hopefully you remember uh, in the last slide we had uh, onam i showed you the festival right which was their harvest festival that they were wearing this so it's a white sari which is called the setu sari and they have the golden border okay this bengal has the red border kerala has their golden border and then you also put you know these white flowers it smell really nice you put that on your hair okay and what they're wearing this is called the lungi the guy they wrap around it's called the lungi okay mm, yeah this is in gujarat gujarat is west western most state okay this is what they're doing and they are dancing with you know the sticks this is dandiya you might have seen in some which hindi film has dandiya i don't remember some hindi film will have dandiya okay so they they have two sticks and they so wait, wait. 
friends say so these are my two uh, sticks and you just according to the beat you just play it and say if i have a partner i you know i do this and i do this and that's how i dance that's dandia uh, the person is uh, the girl what she is wearing is called a chanya choli okay called a chanya choli for both the guy and the boy and uh, as you can see it's very colorful uh, their clothes are very colorful and um, it's this is uh, gujarati people are yeah just very happy jolly okay uh, what he is wearing is called the sherwani okay what is and um, this is the anarkali the, yeah i think elisa recognizes her anyway yes <laughs> very famous actress alia bhat <laughs> okay what she's wearing is the anarkali and what she's wearing is the lehenga you see lehenga okay so these are again um, these three the last one these you will find mostly in the northern part of the country these are clothes you wear generally in the northern part of the country okay mm, yeah okay uh, so uh, the indian film industry is the largest in the world in terms of the number of films produced so india produces more than almost 2000 films every year in more than 20 languages so uh, these are the photos i've put it's mostly bollywood movies bollywood is our hindi film industry similarly we have the bengali film industry there is a malayalam film industry there is a kannada film industry there is a tamil film industry so there are a lot of film and and each of them have you know they have their own actors and actresses and uh, they produce a lot of films and that's where this such a huge number comes from so um, yeah that's why the indian film industry uh, mostly wherever you go across the world you will find that one person who knows some reference or some actor or somebody at least or some tune they're dancing to so yes and very like our culture also very like we are also um, all our movies generally have a lot of dance have a lot of music uh, whatever the story line be <laughs> so uh, yes and generally very colorful very vibrant because um, as as a society as with, with our history and with our culture also uh, we are very you know expressive and very vibrant and uh, all that so that comes out in our art as well so yes that is the end thank you and i really hope that uh, you guys come to india at least once in your life because it's really a experience i think you should have because just just being in the country and just seeing the country is is an experience uh yeah any questions anything you want to say anything anything at all and i really hope that i added a little bit to uh you know elephants and shahrukh khan by the end of the presentation and i hope you remember it by a little more now yes um anybody anything how do you read the chat who oh. okay um um so java there are uh question and okay yes um uh, i see one question is uh, how is the cost of living as a student uh, in the chat so um cost of living is uh, okay so as a student as i'll speak for myself um it de depends from where you're living how you're living which place you're living so um cost of living is not much not 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 okay. i'll tell you my monthly 
expenditure my monthly expenditure is around say 3000 4000 rupees taking into account my food my uh, you know staying uh, like so 3000 wait i will need to convert 3000 rupees will equal to how much was one 1 rupee was equal to 0.049 sol right so right. yeah so you have to convert i am little bad in maths please do this so it's basically around 3000 um 3000 per month okay that movie about the killer fly what do you oh you some i think you're talking about makhi uh makhi was a hindi film where the guy uh, was killed in their first life and reborn as a as a fly and then took their revenge i think it's that one yeah yeah it's that one okay uh, so yeah that was makhi what do you think about the film industry of your country oh i am a, i am i am a huge fan of the film industry uh, and um, yeah i i like um, i i see i follow bollywood and tollywood tollywood is the bengal it's okay all the wood has come because of hollywood uh, so there is like hollywood is actually a place there is no place called bollywood uh but it's just uh western influence i guess so the indian uh, i follow the hindi film industry and the bengali film industry and yeah i have some favorite movies from both and i grew up watching them because in our house um for a long time we did not have english channels uh so uh all my you know childhood favorites and so yeah i i relate more if you give me hindi film references than if you give me a english but yeah that depends that depends across i like hollywood obviously like there are some great movies but yeah which cities or places do you recommend to visit during a trip in india okay uh i think this is a very very broad question and um, like um you depends how long you are coming which airport which part of the country you are landing in where you are spending time so according to that um, so if you are coming i you could contact me i'll give you where to go but uh, i think so yeah there are so many temples there are a lot of forts um there there are a lot of monuments so if you mention say one part of the country or something then it's easier it's very difficult just if you say india it's just yeah anybody anything okay i think um to, I'll, what do you recommend to visit um i'll tell you my favorite place in india so i went to himachal pradesh one of our northern states in in my 8th grade and it's just a very beautiful place it's just the so we we camp we went for camping in this one place where there were it's called sangla valley and you have hills all around and you had uh, the river in front and it's just a very beautiful place uh, so that is one of the most favorite places i have ever gone to so sangla valley and um, delhi if you go to delhi delhi has uh, so many um, you have the taj mahal in agra which is a few hours away from delhi you have the red fort uh, if you go to rajasthan rajasthan is even on my list um, so my roommate from college she is from rajasthan and i really hope that i get to go some day uh, so rajasthan has innumerable so if you see you know celebrities getting married in destination weddings and all that you will see these huge forts and these huge palaces those are really there and, and um, so it's you you will feel like a princess or a prince when you are you know you will just feel royal just by being there so it's a, it's beautiful yeah so also depends on what kind of a person you are 
you want to chill on a beach you want to camp a hillside you want to see historical places and museums i can give you a list according to who you are so yeah anybody anything else i have spoken a lot i hope it did not sound like preaching and a lecture that you do not want to listen to and has been forced on you <laughs> okay Hi, um, I'm Tatiana. I wanted to ask you one more question. I don't know if in, here, for example, in Peru, if we, if it's summer, we can use short dresses and uh, skirts and shorts. Uh, is that allowed? Or in certain cities, you can dress like that. Uh, so uh, generally, uh, short clothes, um, you, we don't wear it in public. So um, in certain parts, like I said, in cities, say you're going to a pub, you're going partying, um, it's understandable that you can wear it then. But uh, say, you know, wearing a bikini on a beach or, you know, wearing shorts and going to the market, these are not things you will see. And uh, yeah, you, it's, you yourself will feel uncomfortable because people around you will make sure you do. So, um, yeah, we generally uh, wear, um, like, uh, for our college, uh, we wear uh, kurti and leggings. So, uh, it's like, it's almost like the salwar that I showed you in the photo. So, we wear, like, uh, it's, it's, on, it's generally full sleeve and, you know, covers your full leg. So, more, as, as less skin as you can show publicly. But again, uh, if you are uh, in a zone, you know, your part, if you're again in the partying uh, thing and there's a party and there's all that, then people are wearing um, as less clothes as you can imagine. But yeah, generally in public, in formal places, um, we don't. Yeah. You, yeah, like in movies, uh, you do see your heroines wearing it, but even they are not wearing it in India. They go to Europe or they go to some beach in some other part of the world and wear those. It's very difficult in India, yeah. Sorry for interrupting your yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. Is that it then? Yeah, we have another question that, what are the most common diseases in India? Okay, uh, most common diseases um, is uh, tuberculosis. Uh, tuberculosis um, is the most common respiratory disease uh, in India. And uh, yeah, so like right now, COVID-19, the mortality rates and everything, TB kills more people than COVID-19 does, even now, uh, every year in our country. So also wearing masks and all, you know, sanit um, sanitizers all the time, it has helped reduce that also. So tuberculosis is one. Um, then a uh, lot of women, especially in our country, suffer from anemia because of malnutrition. Again, because, uh, you know, because of menstruation and heavy bleeding, which is, which they do not seek uh, help for or you know medication for or they and just because of malnutrition so anemia is a thing uh, also um, what anemia is also a leading cause of pregnancy related um, complications in India then there is um, diabetes diabetes um, recently diabetes hypertension these are you know lifestyle uh, diseases basically because um, especially in the urban parts of the country, these have become uh, very uh, severe. Yeah. And um, also India accounts for one of the uh, major uh, contributors to um, cardiac diseases. So a lot of cardiac, uh, you know, uh, say just uh, infectious causes of cardiac diseases and all that is very high heart attacks and all that yes so i think these are the few what else asthma asthma also thanks to because of the pollution so asthma is one yeah 
that's i think that's those are few of the most important diseases that we deal like these are the first things that come to our head when when a patient comes with you know similar symptoms these are the first things we would like to rule out anybody okay yes i have a question yes yes uh, i've seen a lot of movie uh, with uh women's and they're wearing a lot of bracelet and um, how how what is the meaning of the bracelet or maybe when are I don't know how to say bracelet, but when it's in your foot, in your, uh, I don't know how to say it, but it's yes. like in your foot. <laughs> uh, that's okay. So what the bracelets that you wear, so you, you might have seen, so there are different kinds again. So like a lot of, you know, say this much they're wearing. Yeah, they're wearing a lot. Yeah. And you will see dance moves like this, you know, and they're dancing like this. So <laughs> those bracelets are called churi. Okay. It's called churi and uh, what you wear on your leg, uh, on your ankle, basically anklets or so that is called uh, nupur. Okay. So um, I think it's, it comes from the same thing, gives a musical sound and looks good when you're dancing. Hence we like it. So also uh, there are some uh, like there is, uh, the, there are certain religious things also like a married women uh, wear, um, wear a red and a white churi, a red bracelet and a white bracelet. So after you get married, those like on in both hands, you will have those two bracelets. Or uh, there is also this one um, necklace that they wear, which is called the Mangal Sutra, which is black and golden. It's made of black and golden beads and they wear it. And it's, yeah, um, you will see very dramatic scenes with the Mangal Sutra like this yeah and people yeah they put sindoor on the head when you get married so it's uh yeah uh, yeah you have no spins you have elaborate people wearing it on your nose and you have like this yeah it goes it's beaded and then you so uh, that's called a nathni nathni means you wear it on your nose then you have what you wear on your head in the middle of your head you have it that's called a tickly so yeah you have a lot of then you there if they're wearing saris they might also have like this huge uh, you know um, decorated thing that they wear on their waist around the sari or um, on their hair also like say they have made a long braid and in between their braid uh, you know they put um, uh, they put flowers also but they also put like these ornaments uh, I have no idea what they call that, but yeah, they put that out. So we had to, like when I had um, to do like dance shows uh, or in on stage in school, that time they used to make us wear a lot of this. So yeah, <laughs> they used to just put powder on our face and make us wear everything. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, people like dressing up. So they make yeah, and they, they generally those churi that you see, uh, you'll see, say, they were mostly of the same color. So, say, a lot of, so uh, it, those are basically gla glass bangles. So, yeah. They're very famous. If you come to India, buy yourself churi. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Also, big earrings. You'll see a lot of big earrings. And, uh, you know, people wearing big earrings and elaborate beads. Yeah. Is that it? Anything else? Um, someone asked me, what is the meaning of the bindi in your... The bindi? The bindi? The bindi? The bindi? Does it have a meaning? Uh, I know the red bindi does. Um, so like if, if generally only married women wear the red bindi, um, also like earlier it used to be, you know, the sindhu that they put on their head when you get married. So just a drop of that, like you put a little bit of that powder and that becomes the bindi, but now you have like, it's like stickers actually. So the so red bindi is generally, uh, you know, put on by married women. Otherwise it's just looks good goes with your dress yeah otherwise uh, like it's, it's compulsory in certain parts for married women to wear it 
and uh, it's otherwise uh, oh there's one more thing there's one more thing i uh, i'm not very sure if uh, if this is a reason um so the goddesses uh, are said to have three eyes so two two we have and one in the middle of your forehead it's called three nayan so basically it's the third eye is through which you see your uh you know your spiritual power and um your all of that comes from your third eye so yeah so the bindi marks the third eye marks you know so you are a goddess you celebrate that yeah thank you welcome anybody is i think that's it i don't see any more questions as such yes we don't have more questions Mm, nope. Okay. So I want to say thank you <laughs> again oh. because this presentation was very nice and I think probably all of us learn more about the the country that you are come from that is India. And now I hope that uh, the participants know that India is not only elephants and, and Bollywood movies, and also not only cows. But then um, I think that probably in the future, some of the participants wants to travel to India. And I recommend that because it's a very nice place and you learn a lot and you eat a lot of food. That is what they're very delicious. And thank uh, you for having me. Thank you for giving me this opportunity that I could come here and talk, and yeah, thank you so much for having me. Ah, uh, there's a lot of messages for you in on the chat in the chat. Oh, they are so thankful for the presentation. It was it was uh, it was amazing. I liked so much. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, and we learn a little bit of Hindi. <laughs> yes. yes. Do you remember yeah, anything? Do you remember? Tell me one thing that you learned. Uh, in Hindi? Huh? Yeah. huh? yeah, I know. Um, and now uh, that I learn in India. Now, now. Yeah. India yeah. one, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me now. My name is Ho. Mm. And I know another that is. Uh, now you stop. Okay. You stop. Now you now you stop. You know, I want others. <laughs> I heard I heard Dalila say ha and ha, so she yeah. remembers that. Yes. Does anybody remember anything else? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Enough. Two students who remember is enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you for having me. It was fun.